I know we talked about flight data analysis, but how does the customer get the data to you? Good question. Most of our customers have the handheld unit, the RSU2, and I know you folks looked at this earlier. For some of our customers, actually quite a few, they don't have a handheld unit. So they actually have to send me the flight data recorder because they can't download it in the field. Okay? So they will, and here's an example of it. All right, this is a modern day flight data recorder. It's an FA2100. It's a solid state flight data recorder. When I get this in-house, I'm going to do all the paperwork for the customer, and then I'm going to have to hook it up to my own version of an RSU-2. Now, I don't have to carry this onto an aircraft, so I have the RSU-2 software on my computer, but it's the exact same software, right? So the first thing I'm going to have to do is start the software, and as you can see, I've got a number of selections on the main menu. We're only concerned with downloading from the recorder. So I'm going to click on the recorder functions. I have a choice of looking at the data in real time. That's the monitor flight data. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to download the data off of that flight data recorder because I want to analyze the data in AFSCAN. So I'm going to click on the read flight data. Now, we need to gather a bit of information about the flight data recorder and the aircraft it came off of. First thing we enter is the technician's name. That happens to be me. So I put my initials in here. I'm going to hit next. Then we're going to enter the tail number because when I analyze the data, the report that comes out has to have the correct tail number on it. So I'll enter the data and then I'll hit next. Now I want to know where this data was downloaded. So a customer might put in an airport code like MIA for Miami, but we want to know that we actually downloaded this data at the lab in, at Avionica. So we typically put in AV lab. Now, my RSU2 has all the available flight data recorders. Right? A customer will only have the flight data recorders available that they have on their aircraft. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make sure that I've matched up my flight data recorder to what I'm going to select. All right? My cable says it's an FA2100, and it says it on the FDR itself. So I'm going to select the FA2100. I'm going to download all of the data on this flight data recorder. I know we discussed the fact that flight data recorders by regulation have to have 25 hours of data minimum. With today's technology and larger memory cards, there are often way more than 25 hours. So we just put the word all. And the RSU2 is now going to tell me exactly how to connect what cables to what. So for instance, I have an interface cable from the USB port on my computer, or my RSU2, and I'm going to connect it to a PTI cable that is specific for the FA2100. Okay, now, you get to help me out, because I need the power turned on to the, FA, to the flight data recorder, and that's that little black switch right down there. That's right. Now the RSU2 software is going to attempt communication through these connectors with the flight data recorder. Hit next. And now the software is going to tell us when we've established communications, which we've just established. And now it's going to start downloading the data. Now this type of flight data recorder, because it's solid state, it only takes 15 minutes to download. Some of the older rec recorders, especially the tape units, can take up to four hours to download. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the tape units obviously have a lot of problems. You know, tape wear, tapes break. Right. Okay, so it's downloading. When it's done, uh, I'm going to actually transfer the files over our local area network to my servers, and then I'll go back to my desk, and I'll start working on the analysis. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome.